What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Des. I go by Des B and you've stumbled across this video in this channel that finally has an introduction. Last get ready with me. I totally forgot to even make an intro. So even though I look like this right now, I'm like, I can't forget. So welcome to this video. What I want to preface this video with is that I was going to do a vlog about things that people don't tell you when you're 23 years old or like about the year of being 23. Everyone tells you about 18 and 21 and 25 because it's like a quarter life crisis or whatever, but then they don't tell you about that age in between of 23. Then I got to thinking, you know what? There's a lot of things in life that people don't tell you about. So I'm gonna address a few of those things here today with a variety of topics such as having multiple dogs, competing, moving, getting engaged, all the goodness I'm just gonna rip off right now. So to get started, obviously, I don't know why I do get ready with me videos because usually only beauty vloggers do that and let me tell you I'm the farthest thing from that but here we are doing the same makeup routine every single time that doesn't include any form of eyeshadow pigments or even good makeup are you laughing at me Awesome. So let's first get started with the real tea of the video and that's what no one tells you about being 23 and I think that's a fair place to start. You know, I'm just gonna do it like this because 23 for me, 23 and me, <laughs> 23 for me was nuts. And I'm gonna say that in the best way possible because 23 was filled with just a ton of crap that I didn't think it would be filled with. So what people don't tell you about being 23 is that you're probably gonna go through like five mental breakdowns a month. This includes questioning your life. This includes questioning what you went to school for, questioning your friends, questioning why you have friends, etc. One of the biggest lessons that I learned this past year being 23 is that not everyone likes you. And this was a hard one for me. And you might be like, why? Because you should know that, you know, I know a lot of people that don't like me, but like this was hard for me because growing up, I just like tried my hardest to make, oh God, here we go again. Um, I tried my hardest to get everyone to like me. That's how I am. I'm a people pleaser and I like it when I know people like me, you know, it's a bad trait. But it's also good because I try my best to be the best me for everyone, you know? Which that also created me to be very moldable. I mold to each person so that I please, you know, their their specific personality. And so 23 taught me that I just can't be playing that game anymore. And anyone that doesn't have time for that, I also don't have time for. Another thing that I learned at 23 and what no one tells you about is that you have a lot more bills. You got a lot more stuff to pay for, including probably student loans in my case, a car, apartments, dogs, Wi-Fi, and other et cetera bills. But they just start piling up. You know, when you're 21, you can keep track of them all. And then you turn 23 and you're like, what is even coming out of my account? No one tells you about that. No one tells you how to keep track of your finances. And they just expect you to like learn it all on your own. I need more help. We need more help out here at 23. But really, 23 was just a huge year of self-discovery. You know, a lot of thankfulness, a lot of tears of happiness and sadness. But ultimately, you know, no one tells you how life-changing it is. So for any of y'all out there that are 23 and below, or if you're mid-23 right now and you're just like, Wow, wish I would've known this. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. You can X out now if that's all you needed. The next thing that people don't tell you about and don't talk about is getting engaged. I bet y'all are waiting for me to say something bad, and I'm not. I'm not gonna say anything bad. But they also don't tell you how freaking crazy it is. You know, everyone's always like, Wow, when you get engaged, your life changes, and it's so crazy. They're not lying. But they also don't tell you, and really, really tell you, how amazing it is, and how insane it is to know that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with one person. I think as a child of divorce, people also don't tell you that it brings up skeletons in the closet and fears that you didn't know that you had. And I say that because I grew up my whole life with my parents divorced and I said, and I told everyone, I'm not affected. I feel fine. You know, my parents are still in great standing with each other. You know, I was lucky and I have parents that I still got along. So people were like, you know, 
I'm fine. And then Wyatt and I get engaged. And now I've been having anxiety about divorce before we even get married. And that's embarrassing to say, but it's, it's weird and it's weird and it's something that a lot of people don't really tell you about. They don't tell you that that anxiety is normal and that it's okay, you know, you're just expected to be like, woo, like I'm wedding planning, oh my God, it's so fun. And they don't tell you about the rest of the stress that comes with it. Same thing with wedding planning too. No one tells you how freaking stressful it is and how expensive it is. You know, maybe they do tell you how expensive it is and maybe I just like, brainwashed myself to not think about that. But you have to be ready for being engaged and you have to be open to communicating with your partner and really understanding your guys' backgrounds, what you need to work on together, what you expect out of each other and more. Or else you're gonna set yourself up for a terrible beginning of marriage. But again, no one really tells you about that. They just tell you, go to go to counseling, go get premarital counseling, you know, etc. They don't really tell you about the changes that occur in your relationship. It also is something that you find out. You know, each relationship is different, so I respect that. But just so you guys know, especially as a child of divorce, like you might be like, oh, I was never affected. And then you're gonna get engaged and be like, oh my goodness, I was. You know, so I'm learning through that and I'm growing through that, but it has definitely been something that I've, you know, learned, wow, I have a fear of being divorced and now I'm scared why it's gonna leave me. Just kidding. But really, it is a fear that I'm working on and um, something that we're definitely gonna have to keep talking about. Some other things that people don't tell you about is moving a thousand miles from home or moving away from home, period. No one talks about that, really. Everyone's like, oh my God, I moved and I'm doing great and I'm thriving. Look at my car, look at my new house, look at my cute apartment and my dogs. But no one really tells you how hard it can be and how like scary it is moving and especially moving a thousand miles from home. You know, if you guys are new here or aren't, I moved a thousand miles from home from Michigan to Florida, which not only was a different climate, but also a like completely different life. And no one tells you how lonely it is. It is so lonely and so isolated at first. You know, I'm, I'm like finally finding friends, but like no one really told me at first, hey, the first few months are gonna suck. Warned me of that. Everyone is just like, oh my God, you're gonna love it. Uh, it's so nice all year. Just watch out for season when everyone comes down and I'm like, okay, no one told me I was gonna be depressed or gonna be going through a like season of loneliness and like questioning why I moved down here. So if you're someone that's moving from home, like be prepared to miss your family and, and find ways to like stay in contact with them and don't be afraid to get help if you need it. I went out of my way to try to see a therapist and they actually never called me back. But I tried and it was a time where like I was kind of embarrassed, but I needed it. My sister then after I moved got pregnant so not being there for like her pregnancy and stuff has been really hard too and no one really tells you about especially when you have a have a sibling and you're close no one really tells you how like hard it is to to leave and like not be there and not experience things that you know your family's going through so if you're someone looking to move I would always say go for it we all learn and oops we all learn and go through different things and like you have to go through that kind of move to like really grow. It's been such a growing experience, but like it also is gonna suck. Like I'm gonna tell you straight up, moving is just not fun. It's really not fun. And I would say confidently, I've been here for what, like seven months now, eight months. And I can finally tell you I'm enjoying where I live. Finally, some days it still sucks. When you're thinking about moving just as much as you're like, wow, I can't wait to get out, really embrace and be thankful for where you're at right now. Let me tell you, I miss being home. And during that time, I was like, wow, I'm gonna thrive so much better when I move. And for a while there, like I wasn't thriving at all. Be thankful for where you're at, really embrace the family that you have around and continue to like wanna move and like grow from that. But it sucks sometimes. The next thing no one really tells you about is if you're a competitor, no one really talks about 
the ins and outs of competing or like a show day. Did you guys know that you have to get naked in front of about 50 other women to get tanned? Yeah, you might be like, duh, Des, you're getting spray tanned, you have to get naked. First and foremost, I never knew that. I didn't know you had to get naked for a spray tan if you were competing. This was me being naive. I knew, I, I just didn't know. And second off, I didn't know that if you did get naked, that it was going to be in front of everyone. Everyone. You, I was in front of like 50 women. With my titties out. And my booty out. And everyone is just there. Oh my God, it was so awkward. They also don't tell you you have to pee in a cup on show day. Yeah, you have to pee in a cup. You heard that right. You have to pee in a cup because your pee will splash on your body and your spray tan will literally blot. It's so disgusting. Ew. And they don't tell you how bad you're gonna smell. So if you're competing and you're going for your show the first time, bro, bring as much like body spray as you can. Bring freaking Febreze, you know, like Febreze yourself because you are gonna be smelling so bad. It's embarrassing. Like you literally smell like like, you know garbage on a hot day? That smells good compared to what you're gonna smell like. So make sure that you're prepared for that. Another good thing to bring are dryer sheets. Again, this is if you're competing on show day. Get dryer sheets to use as deodorant because you can't actually use deodorant. And guess what? They don't tell you that either. So I'm helping you guys right now. Another thing they don't really tell you about competing is that after the show, you... Eat till you're probably sick. And it's disgusting to say out loud, but like after going that long without eating like a ton and you have this like free range, it's disgusting how much you eat. And you're probably gonna get sick and then you're gonna hate yourself and then you're gonna wake up the next day and then you're gonna think you're fat and then the whole cycle just will repeat itself until the next time you decide to prep, so. Yay! That's a big reason why I left competing is because I could not handle that anymore and it made me feel like poop. But different strokes for different folks and everyone goes through each situation different. So a lot of people like don't have the same experiences. But I will say as an ex-competitor, the mental battle after the show was something that not a lot of people actually talked about enough and was something I really struggled with. So if you guys have any more questions about competing, this isn't what this video is about, feel free to hit me up and I would love to help you. The last thing that I really wanna talk about and I'm telling you about is um, when you get two dogs. Everyone told me, oh, like when you get two dogs, you're gonna love them, whatever. And I was scared as hell. The first day I got Reggie, that night, I was going to bed and I put Reggie in a kennel and I had Jax with me on the bed. And I literally cried with Jax in my arms. And I said, I am so sorry that I got Reggie. I literally said that to Jax. We were crying. I was crying in bed. And the next day, I also told him I was sorry. For the first two days, I was really regretting getting another dog. And I didn't think that I would love him like I did my first dog. It's almost like having a kid, you're like, whoa, what if I don't love him? I can't send him back, you know? And... Uh oh. <sighs> Luckily, I didn't send Reggie back, but the first few days were really hard. He had to pee all the time, and then like Jax was like potty trained, but Reggie wasn't, and when I took him on walks, Reggie wanted to pull and was like mimicking what Jax did. It was hard, but what they don't tell you is that it's worth it. Okay, maybe they do tell you that, but I will be the one to also tell you that it's so worth having two dogs. If you're someone out there, I wanna just encourage you today to go adopt another dog because having two dogs is so fun. They just love each other and they have so much fun running around and you don't have to like pay too much attention to them if you're working because they have each other and they just, they enjoy each other's company and it's so cute and they like touch noses and they like smell each other and <sighs> it's so cute. <laughs> uh, should probably add more highlight because why not? Okay, one more last thing that no one tells you about is that Spotify is better than Apple Music. Just kidding. <laughs> it's true, but no one really tells you and probably doesn't tell you enough how amazing you are. And I don't mean to be cliche here, but we tend to live life sometimes just so passive and we don't take time to really stop and literally smell the roses. We don't have time. We, we, we're constantly on a run. We live in a world that's fast and we're always moving and grooving and vibing and whatnot. So I just wanna take an extra minute today to tell you how amazing you are. And I might not even know you watching this video, but you might just need to hear it. 
So I encourage you to also pass this on to someone that you know today. Pass this just simple word of, hey. I want you to know how amazing you are and that I appreciate you. Just a simple text, a, a voicemail, a voice call, a voice message, an Instagram DM, a tweet. I don't care how you do it, but tell someone today that you appreciate them and how amazing they are. So thank you so much for being here. Obviously, I'm about to turn 24 this week. I'm freaking terrified, but you know what? We're gonna live through it. We're gonna slay through it. And I'm so excited to have you guys a part of this new year of mine. I have so many goals, so many new things that I wanna do, so many new things I wanna share. And I'm very excited to have you guys along for the ride, including like you guys here on YouTube. I wanna bring more to you guys. So if you have any ideas or anything that you want to see on my YouTube channel, make sure you drop those comments below. I really want to get into some more scheduled, fun, creative content, but sometimes, you know, I just don't know. Make sure you leave some recommendations below. I do have my hip bands launching here this weekend on my birthday, my new cheetah hip bands. Insert the picture here somewhere. Very excited for these to launch. They come in three different sizes, small, medium, large, and they are different tensions for different exercises, making it easier or harder. You do get a mesh travel bag with it, and I'm also including like stickers and a thank you note, et cetera, in every single order. So make sure that you peep those in the description box below and get ready to order. Saturday, I only have a limited amount so other than that thanks for being here as usual i hope you guys enjoyed this little fun video that i thought of and i hope to see you guys around in the next one thank you so much and i hope you have an amazing week